Hey everyone, it's David Sirota. So two local stories tell the story, the larger story, of economic inequality and what the priorities of oftentimes state and local governments really are. There are two stories out of the state of Maryland. The first story was about the state workers retirement program cutting off state workers from prescription drug coverage off of their health plan, the health plan that they get as employees of the state. Uh, those who've retired from jobs with the state of Maryland have learned that starting on January 1st, 2019, they will no longer get prescription drug coverage with their state health plan. So, okay, so keep that story in mind. Now, the other story that came out at the same time as this was a story about how much the state employee retirement system is paying out to Wall Street money managers. This is a story in the Financial Times, again, about Maryland. The Financial Times reports that Maryland's state pension has furiously defended hidden fees worth $87 million that it paid to private equity managers following some criticism that it faced for not disclosing these fees. So $87 million a year that they had been hiding in fees. Overall, experts estimate now that Maryland is paying about $172 million a year in undisclosed performance fees every year to Wall Street money managers. And for these fees, the state retirement system isn't getting great returns. Uh, over the last 10 years, it's gotten a 4.3% return, which trails a low fee stock index fund, uh, which has notched about a 6.4% return. One expert from Johns Hopkins University estimates that Maryland could save almost half a billion dollars a year in fees if it used low fee stock index funds instead of investing state retirees and state workers money in high fee, high risk Wall Street firms. So let's go back and remember what we've just learned. The state retirement system, the state employee system, is cutting employees off of their basic prescription drug coverage. At the same time, the state employment system for the state retirement system for employees is paying up to $172 million a year in financial fees to Wall Street money managers for a portfolio that generates returns that can't even beat a low fee stock index fund. So the big question, of course, is why would the state, which is pleading poverty to justify throwing workers off of their prescription drug coverage, why would the state at the same time be spending so much money on financial fees? That's the big question, and there hasn't been a great answer to this uh, from state officials across the country who have been asked questions about the fees that their pension funds are paying. Some of it may have to do with a conventional wisdom. Oh, we've got to give our money to the smartest guys on Wall Street who charge big fees, and they'll get us big returns. Maybe that's part of it, just a conventional wisdom that doesn't really make all that much sense. There's another angle to this, which is that the private equity industry, the hedge fund industry, these are very politically connected industries that are giving lots and lots of money to politicians all over the country. Uh, politicians are ultimately responsible for appointing the members uh, who, uh, of the boards that oversee these pension funds. So is there political influence here? It's really hard to know, and it could be different on a case-by-case -case basis. But when you look at the, the situation in practice, cutting people off of their prescription drug coverage while spending $172 million a year on financial fees to the richest people on earth, it tells the larger story of inequality. It's one state, but there are stories like this all throughout the country. Maryland is experiencing a governor's race right now. One question will be is whether any of the candidates for governor actually bring this up, actually uh, make an issue out of at once cutting people off their prescription drug coverage and paying these big fees to Wall Street. That's something to watch. That's a big governor's race, a big Democratic primary. There's a Republican incumbent uh, in, in the governorship there right now. Watch to see if that comes up in the race. I'm David Sirota. You can follow all of our work at TYT Investigates on Twitter, uh, on Facebook, and we will continue to report on these stories and more right there.